Thank you so much for being with us today. Um, let's start by if you can just provide us with a little bit background information about who you are and what you do. Sure. Um, my name is Charlie Johnston Brosnan, and I am a family and divorce mediator. I um, started about 25 years ago. I got into mediation because I was mediated myself. My um, The father of my children passed um, in a commercial fishing accident and things conflict escalated between his family and I. And um, it wasn't, I didn't even know about this thing called mediation back then. And, uh, but my father, who was a family therapist had actually been trained in it. And so offered to facilitate conversation uh, between myself and um, uh, my children's father's family. And one day we sat down and for eight hours, we, mediated and we talked about all of our fears and uh, resentments and uh, worked out an agreement that uh, has served my children for 25 years. And, and that agreement has facilitated many, many holiday meals and actual vacations together. And so it was a beautiful process that had a huge impact on my life. And so um, one thing led to another, you know, I was at the courthouse one day and there was a flyer on the wall that said training in mediation. <laughs> and so, um, I got myself trained and, um, where my, uh, where that training took me over the years was really me honing a craft in family mediation specifically, and most commonly, uh, divorce. So very personal reason for getting into it. Yes, how beautiful yes it can absolutely. Be. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Um, so we know each divorce is unique and everyone involved uh, goes on their own unique journey. Um, if you could change anything or give a heads up to someone who is about to go through this, what would it be? Um, that's a great question. I, I think that, um, you know, divorce is one of the the worst circumstances and crises that can come up for somebody in their life. And very often um, it conflict like that does not bring out the best in ourselves. And uh, so you're not thinking well, and um, there's a lot of um, idea of what fairness is and what your rights are. And unfortunately, those ideas don't, they rarely line up with what the law is. And so um, what I suggest is, uh, my biggest head heads up would be that um, you are not going to find justice in court. Um, and so I highly recommend that you seek help in an arena where you're going to retain the majority of the control over the outcome. Um, in litigation, you do not have control over the outcome. You've handed that over to two attorneys who um, they are trained in an adversarial process. That is what they are good at and um, what you would hire somebody for, but you do not want your divorce to be adversarial. You want it to be as cooperative as process, um, as cooperative of a process as possible. Um, it, it turns into the past path of least resistance and um, you can get it done for far less, retain much more of your assets and um, get it done far more quickly. Um, by pursuing something like mediation, uh, where you do retain control, you're going to end up with a far more fulfilling outcome, uh, something that's going to make you feel, you know, as hopeful as possible. That's the thing about divorce. It's never, you know, it's not a happy ending for the most part. <laughs> Right. You know, so, you know, don't, don't make it worse, you know, put the shredding and the, you know, destructive behavior and interactions in the past and try to just go through this process at least as collaboratively as possible. That would be my heads up and, and recommendation to anybody. Awesome. 
So there's obviously an advantage and a benefit for someone to have a strong team when going through a divorce. How would you recommend or what do you recommend as far as what to look for when selecting, whether it's an attorney or mediator, someone like yourself? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot, um, of, uh, information people gain from watching, you know, law and order, right? <laughs> you know, things like, so they think that they're, they're, <laughs> you know, their own little, um, home lawyer <laughs> and it is, um, it's really not how things are in um, our court system. And so um, if you, if, es if conflict has escalated to the degree that um, you're not able to resolve these things yourself, I highly recommend getting help. Um, the help you want is there's all sorts of mediators out there. There's all sorts of attorneys, financial advisors. You want somebody who, um, who uh, is specific for the divorce process because there is so much law around that um, to be considered with um, asset and debt division parenting time, what are your rights? What are your responsibilities? Spousal support, um, when are you eligible for that? Child support, what does that look like? These are all questions that you, you know your average financial advisor is, they don't know that stuff. That's not you know their expertise. And so I highly recommend definitely finding somebody who, um, whose expertise is in the arena of divorce. Um, also a little bonus tip is that who you don't want on your, um, at least your advisory team is that neighbor who has been through a divorce or her daughter has been through a divorce or, um, they watch a lot of divorce TV or something because right. those, they have a wealth of, of, uh, information that they think that, um, they know the answers to your situation, but in reality, that typically is not the case. And so it's great to have them cheering you on, but they are not the people that you want to seek advice from. So uh, that's that's who I'd put on my team. <laughs> <laughs> great advice. Great advice for sure. Um, is there one memorable case that you've worked on that has had an impact on what you do and how you do what you do? Sure. Um, I would say, you know, when I've been doing this 25 years and about the first half of, so like the first 12 years, it was, um, it was pretty demanding emotionally of me and, um, you know, to, to sit uh, with these families in the midst of this conflict and also just rarely are both people wanting the divorce. And so somebody's broken hearted and it's just, um, it was incredibly demanding of me. It was not something that I was um, able to just like leave at the office. It weighed on me. And um, I took a little mini break for about 10 years. I moved to Maui and I had a little small private practice there where I did probably four cases a year and just really kind of um, pulled back on that. But I also grew a lot in just how I approached um, mediation in general. So then when I came back to Oregon and I went, you know, full time back into family mediation, I found that I had shifted um, away from carrying um, other people's conflict to really um, becoming more of a, seeing myself more as a guide in their process and uh, somebody who could um, make, at least for this little chapter in their life or the end of this last chapter in their life, um, a better place, their world a little bit better by offering them uh, competent support around a pretty complicated uh, subject. And so um, uh, in spite of that, back to your question around, you know, what kind of case um, 
most impacted me. I have not had a lot of these cases, but they definitely, I grow a lot from them is when a case um, kind of is not successful in mediation. And uh, one one thing I do with my clients is, and I another bonus tip is once you've <laughs> engaged in the negotiation process, do not try to negotiate outside of that process because it hasn't worked up until that point, which is why you've sought out assistance. Don't think it's gonna all of a sudden start working and um, just trust the process and wait for your time back in you know, session. Um, uh, and there's very often people who don't do that. And most often when that happens, the mediation, uh, they, uh, they try to renegotiate things outside of mediation. They come back into mediation. Trust has been broken during that time. And then things become far more uncooperative. And, um, one example, and I don't have many examples of that specifically, but I can tell you of every example that I do have of that, they have always come back to my office. <laughs> and, and so I always know the outcome of these cases. Yeah. And I did have one couple, and this was a few years ago, who um, they had tried to negotiate outside of mediation. It blew up. And they came back into the office and there was just no cooperation left in them. And I said, you know, your next step is litigation, which, you know, I always warn again, this is not, this is where you lose control over the outcome. Okay. This is your last stop for you to control the outcome of this situation. And uh, one, a really sad thing around um, when people go into lit litigation is a lot of times it's just based on principle and the court does not care <laughs> about your principles, you know, and they don't care about your situation. The law is not created to benefit you specifically. It's it, they try to figure out what's going to benefit the most people, you know, and so very rarely do you find satisfaction there. Um, so I shared that with them, reminded them of that. And I also shared with them, this is, this was a few years ago, circumstances are far worse now, but a few years ago, I said, this is probably going to cost each of you $50,000, which, you know, is mind boggling to me, but it's the truth mm -hmm. and a year of your life also shocking they off they went to court two years later they're back in my office wow and they said uh you were wrong and i'm like oh i'm hoping things turned out better than what i anticipated and they said no it was not fifty thousand dollars it was eighty thousand dollars for each of us and it was not a year of our life it was a year and a half of our life and we're here because we still didn't get what we needed and we need mediation because oh, wow. we have to figure out how to make this work. One of the, um, it was a parenting plan and one of the parents worked out of town regularly, but they wanted to have a uh, 50, 50 uh, parenting time with one another. And so there was just some really unique circumstances. The children were growing. So they were becoming more involved in different activities. So it was more complicated. And a judge is not going to sit and listen to you talk about all those needs and figure out your daily schedule for you. If you can't do it yourself, they're going to give a general ruling and everybody suffers. And this family came back and they were suffering, you know? And so uh, we remediated and um, were able to come up with an agreement for them. And so that those, those cases definitely have an impact on me and um, really trying to grow, uh, figuring out how, um, you know, learning to like set the rule, don't negotiate outside of mediation, right. things like that, you know, but I do have really great cases too. Most often I have really great cases that I love it when people who have worked hard for their assets and they want to retain those assets. And so 
they set those animosities aside and do the hard work when we sit down at the table to um, to keep as much intact as possible so that um, they can move on into the next chapter of their life, um, set up and ready, positioned to be able to do that um, as well as possible. So, Shirley, thank you so much for spending your valuable time with us today. I really appreciate it. And I feel it's really important for you to kind of tell us what sets you apart from other financial planners as a certified divorce financial planner? Um, that's a great question. Um, so the certified uh, financial divorce financial analyst or CDFA um, mm -hmm. gives you an accreditation um, spe specifically in, you know, it because you can be one across many fields of expertise. So financial planners can be a CDFA, tax consultants, um, attorneys, and mediators. Not very many mediators have that qualification, but it is um, definitely a benefit to couples who have complicated finances um, or really just don't know the law around finances. Every state is very specific in what um, property division looks like, what re how to divide retirement and um, homes and uh, what is marital property, what is um, personal property. So there's all, all sorts of questions um, that, you know, your average person doesn't walk around with this knowledge because it's not, you know, it doesn't, they don't need it. Um, but so to have this, um, the benefit of it is I do have um, expertise around specifically analyzing the finances of couples who have more complicated finances, you know, retirements, um, a home, maybe two homes. Uh, there, there's going to be spousal support awarded, um, the need to have a conversation around child support and um, the difference between those two and, and um, how you can be creative with them, but then how the law says you can't be creative with them. And so um, there's a lot of a lot of things that, um, again, people go in thinking this is fair. Therefore, the law is going to be behind my idea of fairness. And um, then they find out that that's not either one of two things happen. They they find out. Um, after spending a lot of money that that's not the case or they may do a do-it-yourself kind of a thing they don't know and understand um, the law around um, rights and responsibilities things such as marital property and personal property and what you have the right to and so then you end up with a an equitable divorce and um, and so some one person moves into the future um, really positioned to be successful while somebody the other partner is severely disadvantaged because they didn't have um, the information that they needed to really um, make sure that they were taken care of um, going into the next chapter of their life. And so as a CDFA, I'm able to really analyze um, the big picture of somebody's um, and the minutia of somebody's financial situation, both assets and debts, and talk about what long-term goals they have, what they need to reach those goals. And I know one thing um, that you do that I suggest to every client that I have is, you know, when uh, one of the um, parties want to keep the family home, what does it look like to um, be able to accomplish that, you know, and uh, so many people have no idea um, what options are out there for them. And so I'm uh, super grateful for the ability to be able to refer your services uh, to team up with you um, yeah. as a partner in um, helping my clients who um Otherwise, you know, they would just have to sell the home and both walk away with, you know, you know, half a chunk of equity. And uh, very often it's not enough to get them into another place. So um, so that's what a CDFA does. 
And uh, it's incredibly um, beneficial, I think, for people who um, have complicated assets or um, high value clients that have, you know, a significant amount of assets and uh, need help with um, what equitable, um, what is an equitable division. And I would like to highlight, just kind of define that a little bit. Um, most states um, have what's called community property. They're community property states. And so you just divide everything 50-50. Oregon is not a community property state. It's what's called an equitable division state, which means you divide it fairly. And fairly is not always equal. And um, and so, and you can kind of shift things like, you know, okay, I'm going to get retirement and you're going to get more equity from the house. You know, it's not, you're not being forced to just do 50-50 on everything. You can be very creative. And so, um, that's another great thing about Oregon and a CDFA certification is being able to develop those creative agreements where maybe one person needs the house so that they can, you know, have a home to raise the children in or um, a place, you know, to even just stay. And then, you know, the other party, you know, can keep the retirement and Right. How do you divide a retirement? How do you divide a pension? And they're not just, you know, it's not just based on what the value is on that given day. And so um, you definitely want to get somebody, again, with the expertise needed to um, get you the most control over your outcome and the most fulfilling outcome that uh, that you can possibly get. Well, thanks again, Charlie. I really appreciate your time and being with us today and giving some great advice out to those who are watching. Thank you. I was very happy to. Thank you, Dana. Thanks. Bye-bye. All right.